Welcome back to Rebound. Today we are reading pages 254 to 284. Where we left off, Charlie Bell was getting ready to go to sleep and all he was wishing for was being able to sleep through the night and dream his way back to normal life. Later, the smell of fried chicken and mashed potatoes, the blinding light of the midday sun bursting through the pea green curtains and the dribbling sound of a basketball wake me up from my long nap. Roxy, what are you doing in my room? Let's ball, she says, throwing the ball at me. Practice. Today she shoots fades away, and I practice rebounding the ones she misses, which aren't many. Then I practice shooting jump shots from the corner, and she rebounds the ones I miss, which are plenty. Surprise! When we get back from the park, I'm so sweaty, even my sweat is sweating. While I'm in the shower, Granddaddy bangs on the door and tells me, Stop wasting all the water on your bony limbs! which I thought was the whole purpose of taking a shower. Yeah, but whatever. Your Uncle Leroy is out here waiting in that hot car. Get a move on, son. Roxy got all A's on a report card. So her dad's taking her to see a basketball game, and she's invited me to see the Harlem Globe Trotters, the absolute best, the and funniest basketball team on earth. I remember reading a pretty funny Glo- Globe Trotters comic and watching a video that Skinny got after he went to see them last year. After two weeks at my grandparents, I'm actually about to have fun. Say cheese. Uncle Leroy is my father's older brother but he's shorter and doesn't really look like him except when he laughs which he does loudly when grandma takes out her polaroid camera and makes us pose and while we're all hugged up on each other granddaddy lets out the largest fart in the history of farts say cheese don't cut it granddaddy i say nosebleed it doesn't matter to Roxy who's got the aisle seat. That seats 401, 402, and 403, our seats, are a couple of rows from the very top of the arena. Oh, but it does to me because the family in front of us keeps standing and yelling every time a globetrotter dunks the balls or does something really cool, which is pretty much every play. So yeah, I can hardly see anything. If watching. Roxy play ball is like watching a musician a magician at a birthday party pull a quarter from behind your ear. Then watching the Harlem Globetrotters is like watching Harry Houdini cut a woman in half or reappear from being submerged in a ten gallon tank of water with a straight jacket on. These guys are amazing. And then there's a comic book illustration called the Harlem Globetrotters. They between the leg dribble, they behind the back pass. They 360 dunk, alley-oop, off the glass. Wish I was out there with the globe in my hands, hooping and swooping like I was the man. But I'm not, and he is. Ladies and gentlemen, making a special guest appearance tonight is... Globetrotters legend, the baddest, the baldest, the world's greatest dribbler, Freddie Curly Neal. Steals the ball so much they should call him the Riddler. He dribbles down the court, slide like he's stealing a base. His defender can't keep pace, falls on his butt, whoops, it's breathtaking. When he turns around his back to the basket to give the guy a hand, psych! Instead, he throws the ball over his shoulder without looking, and it goes in the hoop. It's supernatural. Halftime. 
Just when the MC comes to the middle of the floor and is about to announce who will get a chance to play C U R L Y Curly, also known as Horse, and possibly win an autographed Harlem Globe Trotters ball, his pants get pulled down and a basket of confetti gets dumped on his head by Curly, which sends the whole arena into laughter. When the announcer reads, Section 400, Roxy is out of her seat, freaking out, talking nonstop. Oh, what if, it, if it's me, Dad? What if it's me? And when he says, row, W. Oh, she starts squealing like Michael Jackson. Just kissed her on the cheek. Uncle Leroy even stands up. The people in front of us turn around frowning. When he says, seat number, a collective gasp fills the arena. And I can almost see the air leave Roxy's body when she shrieks. Sweet. Georgia Brown. Well, look at that, Uncle Leroy says. You won, Charlie. Get on down there and give him the bell business. Uh, Really? It's me? I I won? I I don't know. Maybe Roxy can go and... Yeah, Dad, maybe I can go, Roxy repeats, all excited at the possibility. Now, Roxy, this is Charlie's first game. You've been to see the Globe Trotters plenty of times. Yeah, but I've never gotten to go down on the floor like that. It's not fair. It's okay, Uncle Leroy. I, Roxy, if you want to stay at this game, you need to change your attitude. Now tell your cousin good luck. <sighs> good luck, she mumbles as I stand up making my way down the aisle to the sound of the Glow Trotters theme music, which sounds like one of Granddaddy's jazz songs. Go win one for the bells, Charlie, he says, then stands up clapping as does everyone around us. Everyone, except Roxy. What are the chances? I get up quietly, inch past her bitterness, and make my way down to the center court for a chance to win. Curly, also known as Horse. After he makes fun of my haircut, squirts me with a fake water gun, and throws confetti on me, Curly shoots a pretty easy easy finger roll. I do the same. It goes in. He shoots a free throw with one hand. I shoot a free throw with two hands. It almost goes in. He shakes his head, but the crowd still applauds me loudly. Curly dribbles the ball from one hand to the other, then between his legs and behind the back passes to me. I dribble the ball, then bounce, pass it to him. He frowns. He walks up to a lady on the sidelines, kneels like he's proposing marriage or something, and kisses her on both hands. The crowd goes wild. I freak out. But then I get an idea. I walk over to Curly and kiss him on his bald head. He nods, then takes the ball, dribbles to the half-court line, starts rubbing his stomach in a circular motion like he's hungry, rubs his head smiles, takes off for the hoop, throws the ball against the backboard, leaps into the air, catches it, and slam dunks it so fierce the ball bounces back up in the air and almost goes in the net. There are a few boos, but mostly everyone is captivated by the dunk. I shrug, start walking away, but when the crowd starts cheering, I turn around and see Curly walking towards me. He high fives me, then hands me an autographed Harlem Glow Trotters basketball. After all the halftime excitement, I'm actually on my feet most of the second half, eating popcorn, hooping and hollering, but Roxy's still quiet, still sad, and I feel bad. 
but not bad enough to give her my new curly needle sign red, white, and blue basketball. So instead, I give her my last lemon line, now and later, which doesn't make her smile, but she takes it anyways. On the train ride home, we thumb through the official Harlem Globe Trover trotters souvenir book reading the bios of each of the players and looking at the larger than life photographs we almost miss our stop because we're so into it and uncle leroy dozes off dad dad i think it's our stop roxy says nudging him we all jump up and rush off the train the door is closing right behind us we take the escalator up and just as we reach the top i hear someone call my name from the escalator on the other side. Yo! Charlie Bell? Going down the escalator, waving at me with a single white glove on and telling me to wait for him to come back up is my best friend. Skinny in D.C. What are you doing here, Skinny? I told you I was coming to Washington, D.C., Charlie Bell. What's up, punk? His cousin Ivan yells up to me from the bottom of the escalator. I nod at him. What's up, Charlie? Everything's good, Skinny. We just went to see the Globe Trotters. They were fresh, right? To the max. Is that your granddad over there waiting for you? Ah, oh, nah. That's, that's my uncle. Who's that cutie with you? CJ's gonna be jealous. <sighs> That's my cousin, Skinny. Let's bounce, Skinny, Ivan yells. I gotta go, Charlie, but we should hang out. There's a skating rink near where I'm staying. You wanna roll? Now I can't wait. No, not now, like another day. How long are you here? I think we're leaving the day after the 4th of July. Cool. You never believe where I got a job. At the arcade. How'd you know? I just guessed. No, you didn't. CJ told you, didn't she? Yeah, how is she? Oh, your lovey-dovey is fine. She is not my lovey-dovey. Oh, stop being stupid. Come on, Charlie, you know what I mean. Know what? So you don't really mind that I kissed her? Wait, you what? Gotcha, he says, laughing out loud. I'm just messing with you. She's not the lady in my life. Get it? That's from Michael Jackson's album. Yeah, I get it, Skinny. Hey, Charlie, you miss home? Yeah, kinda. You should come to the Boys and Girls Club. I'm there every day. Where is it? Downtown. Bet. Bet. Hey, Charlie. Yeah? You know why I'm wearing this glove? Yes, yeah, Skinny, I know, because you're bad. Because I'm bad, he sings on his way back down the escalator. Surprise! When I get home, sitting on my bed next to my folded clothes that I thank Grandma for folding is a paisley envelope addressed to Charlie Bell from Crystal Stanley. Dear Charlie, How are you? I hope you're splendid. I saw your mom and she says she hopes you're finding your smile again. I hope so, too. I'm going to Mira Hall's birthday party, which I know you think is kind of strange, because she's always teasing me. But it's at the skating rink, and you know I'm not passing that up. I finished reading 100 books a few days ago, so now I'm reading National Geographic magazines in the library, because you can't check them out, and they're costly. I've been walking Harriet every morning, and we're the best of friends now. Though you're still my best friend, Charlie. Turn over. Not good news. Dear Charlie continued. Today, old lady Wilson fell and the ambulance came. But don't worry, Charlie. She's okay. She didn't break anything, just bruised her hip. So my dad said Harriet could stay with us tonight. But when I brought her home, she was acting despondent as in glum and unhappy probably because she misses old lady wilson or she misses home or she misses you i miss you too charlie write me back goodbye